Should we wait a little bit longer? What? I'm, I'm happy to see you guys. Um, if you don't mind, we're gonna stand up and we're gonna pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity you're giving us to come here this morning and be in, in your Sabbath. Um, now that we're about to start the discussion, um, for this week, please be with us. Send your Holy Spirit so we can talk about your Word and be and grow in, in, in your word, Lord, um, and learn from each other. Um, please be with everyone who's on their way or those who are logging online. Um, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, um, we are a few, so I'm expecting everybody to talk, right? And share, don't be afraid, don't be ashamed. Um, we are learning and growing with each other, okay? So the past few lessons, right? We have been talking about, about what really? About death, right? Um, we've, we've seen death in, um, I mean, from the creation, death is a consequence of sin and, and all of that, right? <laughs> so today we we want to dive into that right into um death which with the contrast of hope right um we we we've touched a bit on the fact that you know we believe in our society that when you die you go straight to heaven and just to give you a little background story um that belief has been pretty much their generations from generation like we say in ancient greece basically we already have trace of that belief you know when you die the soul goes um on that journey um it's either towards um hell which is the hades or you know, going to heaven. In Christianity, even, we have the knowledge of purgatory, right? Where the soul is supposed to, you know, go in that space where it's like temporary or like a temporary punishment um, where your soul is waiting for judgment before going to heaven or hell, right? Um, those beliefs could explain you know, how maybe more give a way to explain um, human griefs or soothe human griefs, griefs. Um, but maybe we could look at it a different way. Um, maybe it try to answer those questions, where are we going? Where are we from? What's next? What, where are we going next? And so we have all the ideas, but today we want to talk and see how the Bible, you know, really talk about life after death. Um, so the title is really interesting. The title of this lesson is The Old Testament Hope. And I really find this title um, interesting because usually when we talk about the Christian hope, we talk about the fact that God died and he resurrected and he lived and now we have hope that he gonna do the same for us, right? Um, we have the experience. I mean, we have the story already um, in front of us. But for those who live in the Old Testament, 
where did they find that hope? You understand? For us, it's easy. But for them, let's 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 start with Abraham. Let's let's read um, Abraham. Okay, Genesis. Sorry, Genesis. Genesis three. Actually, wait a minute. Am I lost in my thing? Sorry, my bad. It's Hebrew. So we're going to go in the New Testament. Hebrew 11. Seventeen and nineteen. Can somebody read it for me, please? Hebrew eleven. Do you hear us on Zoom? Oh, now I hear you. Okay, you hear us on Zoom. Okay, so Hebrews eleven seventeen to nineteen. Yeah. Okay. So verse 17, it says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tired, offered up Isaac, that he had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Hmm. Amen. Thanks, Warren. So verse 19 is really interesting because he it says in the new in the new IV, I mean NIV, um, Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. Okay, where does Abraham take? that hope where does that come from anybody <laughs> i can even give you another example cuz the lesson go it goes even deeper job right let's see the example of job maybe even tangible. If we go to Job 19, verse 25 to 27. Can somebody read it for me? Job 19, 25 to 27. Don't be afraid. It's not on. So Job um, 19, 25 to 27. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the, uh, upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eye shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. ESV. Thank you so much. So do you understand what, what the Bible said, what Job is saying? Basically, even if he's going through, he believed that when his skin will be destroyed, he will still see God with his own eyes. How can you say you're going to, like your skin, your flesh is going to turn into ashes? but still believe that you're gonna see God in your flesh with your own eyes. How can he be so sure when till, till that day, he hasn't got a, any example. Jesus is not dead yet. They don't have the New Testament, right? What, where is that hope coming from? Think about it. Let's talk about it. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think um, in Genesis, we see um, when Adam and Eve sin, the first sacrifice, Jesus did it. And it shows you that, yeah, there's someone that's going to die for you and you're going to live. So I think he had this hope from, from Genesis, even though he didn't see it. We didn't saw Jesus die, but we know that we're going to live too. So it's the same thing as, as Abraham as us do so. I like that. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Somebody else? Nobody else? So like, like Julie was saying, it's exactly that. The story of uh, the creation that has been passed down from generation to generation. If, if we read Genesis 3, verse 15, when God said to, to, to Eve, I'm going to put enmity between you and the serpent, he was already giving the gospel, already giving the prophecy that somebody will come and die for you. So that hope have been there since creation. Abraham and Job are examples of believing in that, in that hope and like the walk with God. Job, Job 19, I mean, when, when you read the story of Job, this, I mean, we know the context of it all. Like he struggled, God allowed Satan to come and attack him, right? Um, even with that struggle, he literally held his hope in God. How, how can you relate to Job in your life, like nowadays? How, how is this story relevant to you today when, when you have the hope, when, when you put in the perspective of hoping or of, of faith? You can share if you don't mind with us. You don't have, I mean, you understand in life, how can that relate to you nowadays? Um, I think I mean, if we um, yeah. think of Job, um, there's um, a scripture, I can't remember it now, but he said, um, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job didn't have a full understanding, okay, because he didn't have the Old Testament or the New Testament. All he had was, um, like you were saying, he had um, the word passed down from generation to generation. And of course, he didn't have a clear picture because when he said the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. It's the Lord giveth and Satan taketh away. So the clear picture of, and we never will have that too, of who God actually is in his, in his loving kindness. I don't think we'll ever be able to um, put that into perspective in our human nature until we see the glory of God, right? So everything that Job, that Job went through, we can draw hope from that because, I mean, do you know anybody that, lost everything what was he left with in the end like four servants i mean you can lose your material possessions and stuff but losing all your children um to the point that i mean his wife i can say like she suffered probably had severe depression to say um curse god and die and then your friends coming and your friends accusing you i mean i don't i personally don't know anyone that has gone through such trauma right mm -hmm. but we all go through personal trauma whether it's an illness, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whether it's, um, you know, family members that we want to come back to the kingdom. And there's horror stories. Um, there's why would uh, my child be born with cancer? Why would my child who's innocent driving along get hit by a drunk driver? Um, you know, there is horror stories of people that have gone through such pain and such hardship in their lives that sometimes it's even difficult to talk about. And the question we, a lot of people always ask is then where was God? Mm -hmm. You know, um, he could have stopped it. Where was God um, at the genocide? Uh, where was God when my child was? God is there and he's ever present, but we live in a sinful world. The hope we can draw from Job is that no matter what we're going through, we can say like Job said, my redeemer lives. 
Our trust is not in um, our ability to go through it. Our trust is in the one who gives us the ability to go through it, right? Mm -hmm. So our hope comes from that. It comes from the fact that I'll see him one day, that this is temporary. Now, I'm not saying that the life we live is not important. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we're supposed to be here and only suffer or anything that we go through, we're supposed to be, oh, it's okay because, you know, one day we're going to see the Lord. You know, people have a tendency to speak like that. They have a tendency to downplay your trauma or downplay your situation. But I am saying in the midst of that situation, your trust is in the character of God, right? Mm -hmm. It's in who he is. And for me, it's, it's, oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm taking so much time. For me, it's like this. If you believe in who he is and you honestly and truly believe that you are loved by this God of the universe, how powerful is that? You will become a reflection of that. But if you believe God is a tyrant and he's looking at every mistake you made and you're going to be like Job's friend that says, um, you know, maybe because I sinned, I'm suffering, maybe because I did something wrong. That's not who God is. He doesn't repay evil for evil. You know what I mean? He's not looking at every opportunity to see if you're doing something wrong and then he's just going to like stamp you. That's not the God we serve. So I think the first step for us as individuals, as, as a corporate unity is understanding God's character, who he is, why do we serve him? Um, and he's a God of love. And when we're going through these trials and tribulations, just understanding his love, he's holding me. The Bible says, I hold you with my righteous right hand and he's not going to let us go. How applicable and easy that is, is a discussion for another day. But I think that's where our hope comes from. Hey Amen. Thank you so much. Now, um, Warren, you wanted to say something? Um, I was going to say... Um... When I think of the story of Job, like obviously we, we put ourselves in the position and yes, it's understandable, but to, to like to answer the question you were asking, mm -hmm. it's hard to relate to Job. Like let's, let, let's put it real term in the, the, the average person, mm -hmm. the average, like Job. Okay. Let's modern day society. Job is a one percenter, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Job is a one percenter. Your average church member or LaSalle LNL, if you want to get more personal, your average LaSalle LNL member is not a one percenter. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so how do you relate really? How do you like, like I, I can, and when you look at the story from that perspective, I can see where, where people are like, oh, well you have everything. So why are you even so worried about God? All right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. how society likes to look at at, at like the rich, for example, when you hear, when you hear somebody that's really rich and they commit suicide or something, they're like, what's wrong with you? How could anything be wrong with you when you have it all, mm -hmm. you know, kind of deal. So put that mindset or aspect on the story of Job and look at it different. And now you could understand maybe where the wife is coming from or where the friends are coming from, or, you know what I mean? When you look at it yeah. from that opposite perspective, mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, that's who Job was. Job was a very rich individual. He wasn't, he wasn't the average. He wasn't the pauper. He wasn't that, that, that. So when you look at it from that perspective, it's like, man, it's, a, and then, and then, God, and then, and God is saying like, we got to like relate to this. It's like, yo, dude, like, how do I relate to this? Like, seriously? Yeah. Yeah. You are, you are, you are touching on the next points. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I completely agree um my brother yeah yeah i just wanted to go back um the question you asked before uh, where does abraham and uh, job found uh, their assurance and and the hope they, that they have i think that we have to look uh, in the power of creation of god because god is able to create and we create is able to do and undo. So these men, the patriarchs at, in the old time, they, they had the, the understanding that God is the creator. So uh, even Job will say, do he slay me? Uh, he said, uh, do he slay me? Yet I will trust him. Because he knew, he had confidence uh, that God 
that created this world is able to recreate it no matter what happened. Whether we become uh, ashes or we just bones, is able to bring us back uh, from, from the earth. Thank you so much. I, I agree. And and th those are the points that really stick out, stick out to me is the belief in the word of God, but also the walk. Because God um, um, allowed Satan to attack Job for a reason. He didn't just look at, okay, just this one. The Bible described Job as upright, somebody who feared evil and not fear i'm scared fear in in the sense of deliberately choosing to avoid avoid um evil consciously making that effort to do something right and that doesn't come like that right it's a walk with god we have the story of abraham his name wasn't abraham always you understand? That means there's a process, there's a journey for him to be um, 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 the father of faith. Nowadays, we consider him the, the father of faith, right? So like the brother says, 2.3b, it's the belief in the word, like they believe literally, if God created this planet with his word, he can literally speak and raise my son back. Well, there's that, and there's also the walk with God, right? Um, to continue on the point that Warren was making, it's it's tough to relate with Job. It really is. It is. <laughs> like you were saying, well, and then nobody go through that much in one time. <laughs> like <laughs> he 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 went through it all, right? And let's 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 go into you know when it comes to the resurrection. Who's concerned when it comes to the resurrection? Let's go to Psalm 40, 49. And it's 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 really a long psalm, but if if you read it, you know what it's about, right? So basically the the beginning of the psalm, it's it, it speaks it speaks about the false confidence of the foolish, you know, who trust in their wealth and boast into the the the, the multitude of their riches, right? So, um verse six says, who um who call their land after their own names? You know, like you reach, reach. And so when when you read um, verse 15, can somebody read um, Psalm 49, verse 15 for me, please? But God will ransom my soul from the power of Sheol, for he will receive me. Amen. Thank you. So... When he's saying, you know, he going to restore my soul, what do you understand? Um, what exactly the psalm is saying, the redeemer of, of my soul, does that mean the soul is going to go to heaven? Is the soul separating and leave the body and go to heaven? Is God taking your soul and holding it? Is that what he's saying? Hello? Anybody? <laughs> no? Do well, you think? Mm -hmm. Soul, soul is, is basic. What's the definition of soul? Thank Am you. I, have mm -hmm. we defined that yet? Well. I came in late. So. No, we haven't. Okay, so soul, in my understanding, is body plus breath, right? Exactly. Body mm -hmm. plus breath, and so if we look at um, if we look at the psalm, we could we can look at it in a in a literal sense and also in a figurative sense, mm -hmm. right? When you're talking about 
you know, all of the trials and everything that you go through, but God, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really interesting. We always say, you know, we do not start a sentence Mm -hmm. uh, with a conjunction. Mm -hmm. Um, However, this one, it starts basically with a conjunction and it's an exclamation, right? right, At the beginning. Mm -hmm. So despite everything that you go through, Mm -hmm. you know, on this earth, you know, but God, right? He always has the final say. And so, you know, even um, as we go through life and we are we are perplexed and we're downtrodden and everything. And, um, you know, God is always going to be the one who can figuratively resurrect you. Mm -hmm. Right. And then also the illusion is to the, uh, uh, is to the physical death. Mm -hmm. Right. So it doesn't matter what you do to my body. Right. In the end, God is going to be able to, uh, rescue, to ransom, uh, the body, and the the breath yeah right uh so that makes the soul thank you thank you Tana. and that's exactly it the soul is the body and the um the breath um in french we say lamb right the spirit basically go ahead yeah, um, I like that word ransom. It's not in every version, I know, but uh, I know that you mentioned it. And I know it's in a few. Um, the, the ransom concept carries all the way to today, really, because if you're a, if you're a parent or you're someone who's in charge of something important, usually you want to take a preventive approach when it comes to, let's say, a kidnapping, right? So. We always, as a parent, you're walking around, you know, you want to make sure your kid doesn't go too far so you can get kidnapped. And in this situation, God had such an amazing concept with respect to salvation that he gave us the freedom to stray, to, to actually enter into dangerous territory, actually be kidnapped, because that's really what a sinful situation is you're kidnapped. You are now under the control of something that is bad for you. Yet God didn't just disown you at that point and say, well, you went off and did your own thing. I know a lot of parents will say that to say, oh, well, you went off and did your thing. So that's, that's what happened to you. You know, (laughs) whereas you have a God who sees all of that happen, gives us all of that length of chain Yet he's willing to draw on his bank account and pay that ransom to bring you back. It's a big concept. And with Job, it's a little bit like that, too, because we discussed this in the last quarter. What did God actually allow? If God had control over the earth, then God had to somehow permit that Satan have like you say in French, the marche de manoeuvre, that he had the freedom to commit all of these acts against humanity. And on top of all that, God was paying every single one of those bills in full. That right there was a word. Mm -hmm. I felt it. That was deep. But it's it's so true. Like when when you think about it, God literally allowed satan and still he's the one that come up with the plan he's the one that came up with the solution um mm -hmm, go ahead you know and and again you know as as ray was was drawing emphasis to the word ransom Mm -hmm. um you know god is the only one who could do this that part right so you look at David and David was so rich. Um, and then you look at some practices, you know, I'm not going to name them. Right. But they believe that they can pay, they can, they can pay money, you know, to get you out of purgatory to save your soul. Right. And so this is so far from the word of God, right. That only his blood right? Only his blood, his sacrifice is able to actually ransom, pay that debt, you know, for us. So no amount of money, you know, can do that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I completely agree. 
We still am so I'm 49. Oh, go ahead, brother Yibo. I think if we look at Psalm 49, uh, listening to what the psalmist is saying, uh, he's saying that those who follow Christ have a hope. You see, because he said, you look at those who are around you and their richness, their wealth, and whatever they're doing, sometimes as a Christian, you become confused. That why am I serving the Lord and I'm poor or I'm suffering? I'm having these experiences. But then the psalmist say, hey, wait. There will be a time that there will be a difference. Now I will have opportunity to enjoy eternity, eternal life, whereas those who were rich and wealthy and uh, doing all whatever they can that I was envying them, they will come to their end and have a punishment. So Psalm 49 is giving us the difference between the hope mm -hmm. of those who have nothing to look for, mm -hmm. but they're looking at their present life. Mm -hmm. And then those who have a hope so that we have something beyond the grave. Mm -hmm. And that is our hope. I like that. Thank you, Brother Ibo. I have a, a different perspective. Hold on. I have a different perspective to, to, to add to what you were saying. Because um, I really, oh, sorry. I, 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 I really like that. But let's, let's look at it differently. Um, um, I'm going to give you a little story. My hairdresser is from Zimbabwe. And yesterday we had a conversation and he was telling me, random, telling me how his mother came and visit and, and like she comes home, he cooks for her, there's food. If um, she didn't eat all her food, she gonna put it in a Tupperware and put it in the fridge. She'll, she'll go to the restaurant, they'll go to the restaurant, she didn't finish, she'll put it in a little bag, you know, and put it in the fridge. When him, he just throw it away. And he's like, you know, we live in a life of abundance. We live with abundance, we have. We may not have a whole lot, but we have more than others. And I don't wanna get into the stereotype or oh, Africa versus this world, whatever, whatever. It can be that person next to you living down the road from you where you live richer than them. Does that, what the psalmist is talking about, does that apply to us? Even if we're not like Abraham or Job who had everything, we may not have a private jet, but does, the psalm still apply to us still, even if we're not rich, rich. You you want it? Okay, him first. Okay, go ahead. I just want to emphasize the, the, the text says, they act as if their houses and their own glory would last forever. The day they're talking about is the, the rich people, the, uh, the wealthy people. And uh, we, we're talking in the text here about uh, King David that uh, in Psalm, Psalm 49. And at the same time, I'm thinking, we just had uh, a clear example uh, in front of our eyes where uh, the Queen Elizabeth just left our world and is, she died. And whatever you do, if we're taking out anyone that could have been rich or wealthy, we could have think of uh, the Queen. But now she's no longer with us but at the same time in the text it says that david had the assurance that when he gets in the grave he would not remain there at the opposite well when the, the queen died i don't think she had that statement and us today that knows a little, little more than uh, these people that was previous to the death of jesus they had um, this assurance that the the grave or the the ground would not withhold them and at some point the the one they put their trust in would one day 
get them back uh, to life. As the sister was saying, the definition of soul is the body and the breath. So the breath will once again come back to these people and they will be able to shout and give praise to God because what they have had the assurance before would, would, uh, would come to pass and become real that they will be uh, a human being or a being and that Jesus would have redeemed. And they, when we say redeem from the grave is uh, the psalmist says, me as a person, I will not stay in the ground. As opposite to some that says, uh, whenever you, you die, you just uh, transition from this life to a different life where you are in heaven, you, you're enjoying uh, some kind of pleasure. So I think that the, the, um, the difference between the, the King David and the Queen that we know uh, from our living is that one has the assurance that he won't stay uh, in, in the grave and the other one has no assurance, no matter how, the amount of wealth she may have or she may be leaving behind her. Okay, thank, thank you, brother. Yeah, you wanna say, you wanna add? I just wanted to touch on the the mm -hmm. the earthly concept of of achievement, which we've which we've been talking about, and I and I know that there's a lot of discussion about how much emphasis we should place on success in this life as opposed to the next life, and I don't think necessarily that they're mutually exclusive, yeah, because as you mentioned, you have some beliefs where you take a vow of poverty. It's like, I promise to be poor. I will never be rich. I don't think that's necessarily the target because if you do have good practices or good habits or good discipline, we can see that in a lot of cases that does lead to some type of, of success, right? I mean, if we're not just throwing our money around, there's a higher chance we'll be able to keep some of it, right? And, and these are principles, that, I mean, otherwise, why would you teach your children, you know, <laughs> the value of money or, or anything, right? Because you would just say, well, it doesn't matter, you know. But the interesting thing, I believe, with respect to the concept of success is, I think, we spend a lot of time aspiring to things. And I think, you know, that's our society, right? It's aspirational. You know, you see somebody who has something that's bigger or better than you and you aspire to it. But I think the part that we miss often is not just the question of what is that really, but think of even small dreams that you might have had, let's say, as a child. Like how, how many people, for example, might have said, oh, I want to go to Disneyland or Disney World or, you know, the, the classic dreams. Now, if you've ever gone and I and I'm hearing some murmurs in the back about, yeah, yeah, I wanted to do that. Now, if you've ever been to Disneyland or Disney World, uh, <laughs> it's pretty disappointing. I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm just saying that, okay, I have now arrived at Disneyland and, and I'm, as a Canadian, I like my cool weather and it's hot, right? I'm walking down this Disneyland, I'm watching Mickey Mouse and I'm imagining how he doesn't die of a heart attack because it's 500 degrees outside and I don't like this experience. I paid all this money to get here and realize this incredible dream, right? And that's what happens, same thing. You buy a nice car, right? And you got to fix it. And it's like $5,000. You say, what, what, what is this thing? And I think that's the problem is that we don't necessarily dial into God's vision of things because God knows all that. And yet, even though we know that God knows that, we still think somehow that we need to know it at our level. Right? If God is not encouraging us in a certain direction. It's really hard for us to accept that we don't need to bother to find out how that is, right? Uh, Joseph, all of those examples that we have in the Bible, it's like, you can roll with us in the big house, you know? And we're always tempted by that. And our society, that's what it is. It's not good enough to have a three bedroom house. You got to have five bedrooms, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And at the end of the day, if you have a bigger house, there's just more stuff that can break. 
I'm testifying right now. You get a big house and it's just, it's more insurance. It's more energy. It's more this, it's more that. And at some point you say, do I need to pay all this money to have something I'm not even using? I'll leave it right there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ray. I, um, I just want to, let's, let's think about it because, because the point I'm trying to make is um, when you read some 40, 49 do you feel concerned do you feel like he's talking to you because it's easy to say the rich people because i'm not rich you don't consider yourself rich in your in your society in in your way of living we we aspire probably for more i know i do you understand but then we have often in the Bible that um, subject, that idea of rich people basically are foolish and supposed to die anyway. Is it because of their wealth? Knowing that Abraham was rich, um, Job was rich, David was a king, and the so um, Samson was a judge. You understand these people were rich. So is wealth related to destruction? Go ahead, Pastor. No. As I listen, even though not being rich gives me hope that the rich and the poor will go to the same place. And of course, on resurrection, even though they, it's described that chances are the poor will make it to heaven. There are some rich who will be in heaven also. And last night, you know, it seems as if the yesterday evening is tied into this week's lesson. Um, October 21, the devotional book that I read from in or Sabbath worship last night was from In Heavenly Places, written by Ellen G. White. And the text used was, it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And then in elaborating on the devotional exercise written by Mrs. White from In Heavenly Places, she said, rich people will be in heaven but she said that we should, for the rich man to be in heaven, the wealth of the rich should be used, right, to advance the work of the Lord, she says, and also to take care of humanity, your fellow men. So she uses the, the, these two things to say that if you're rich and you consider yourself a Christian, then if you're not using your wealth, to take care of humanity, your poor brother and sisters around you. And if you are not using your wealth to advance the work of the Lord, then of course, doom lies at your door. You know, And so it gives me hope that the rich and the poor will make it to heaven. It is how we live our life here on earth that will help us to be caught up in the resurrection. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Well, yeah, when I read when I read the psalm, mm -hmm. um, I actually chuckled <laughs> at myself and I'm like, yeah, Lord, OK, so you're talking to me um, because I I love success. Right. I chase it. I pursue it. Right. I, I love educational success. I love financial success, like happiness, success. I love everything. Right. That it, and I know, and I don't believe that God uh, frowns upon that. You know, he he made us. Um, he said he wants us to be the head and not the tail, right? Um, and I don't believe that just because you're a Christian, you have to walk around, you know, being poor, right? I don't believe, I, for me, I don't believe that. Anybody else, you can disagree with me, but I don't believe that. However, however, God is, God is always in the business of, um, of saving us and protecting us. And sometimes when we have things, we cannot handle it. We cannot handle it. And it turns us into fools. 
And God is like, okay, all right. And I can give uh, a testimony for myself. I had my business, everything was going really successful, like even more than I can imagine. And I was very young. And so to have all of this um, uh, disposable income, and I'm going to call it disposable because I treated it like that, right? Disposable income. It got me so, um, it got to my head. It got, it got to my head and I felt this, um, this assurance, you know, I, I felt this assurance. I felt this peace because, you know, anything I wanted, I could get it. You know, and if you were my friend and you wanted something, you could get it right. There was nothing stopping me, but there was this assurance that, that, that I was placing, um, in that mini wealth, you understand that I was experiencing and God came and God said, you know what, I'm going to send revenue Canada and revenue Quebec <laughs> to fix you, <laughs> to fix you. And I'm telling you, I, I went to the bank one day and the, the cashier, she said, Madame St. Clair, uh, don't, don't put any money in there. And I'm like, pardon? I was like, why not? Right. And then she goes, basically, there's a funnel. There's a, the government has a hold on your account and whatever it is that you put in there, it's going right into their pockets. And I was like, what in the world is happening here? Right. And so they cleared out everything. Right. So now I'm in my parents' basement and I'm sitting on a chair. It's not even a rocking chair, but I'm rocking. Right? I'm rocking back and forth because because everything that I was trusting in and depended um, depending on was completely taken away, you know, from me. And and God allowed me to sit there and stew there. And you know, when you punish a child and they say, go think about what you've done, right? And that's what, that's what happened to me. And so I realize now that, you know, now that my faith, my faith in God has, um, has increased, right? My spiritual life has increased, you know, I see things happening around me, um, you know, that, that, that's, that's like, okay, Tanya, maybe you're mature enough now, right? And so this is what God, this is what the Psalm says to me, right? That he does not want us to depend on it, to put our trust in it. Because he says, you know, I am a jealous God, right? I am a jealous God. And so put me first. And so we have to be very careful um, with how we manage whatever it is that God gives us. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly the point that I was trying to make. Um, go ahead, Mel. Yes, just to capitalize on, on Tanya, I think, I don't believe, okay, can disagree with me. I don't believe there's anything wrong with having material thing. Don't believe there's anything wrong with having electricity in your house. And I'm South African, we don't have electricity or water. Again, I'm South African, we don't have water. There's nothing wrong with these things. It becomes a problem when you allow the things to have you. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so for me I, I grew up we grew up very poor um we didn't have anything um and um I I, I can remember days when we were like uh, oh we don't even know what we you know we're gonna eat or whatever the case may be and when I started working or becoming successful and, and stuff like that I took a lot of things for granted I would just take my whole salary and just blow it on an international holiday or just do ridiculous things with it, like had no concept of saving or whatever. And, you know, you have to come to that place where, again, things must not have you. If you see somebody in need of something, you must be able to give that away. And I think we can mature to that place. But to bring it back into what the psalmist is saying about um, rich people versus poor people, and like the pastor was saying, there'll, there's going to be many people in heaven when you see them, you're going to be wondering, hmm, you know, how did they, because you, you want to judge people based on your own perceptions. And that's where the wrongness comes in. Now, what is the hope that we have? Um, so I'm, I'm going to say this really quickly. There's a lot of people out there when we lose loved ones, especially, and I'm only going to talk about the loss of a loved one. That is pain. Okay. You want that person here with you. 
But the assurance that we have is that one day we're going to see them again. And it's an assurance that we have. Now, why do people go to spiritualists or mediums? Or why do people go to these places? So I, ha I, have, um, I have a cousin um, and we lost um, a member of my family very young due to suicide, right, um, last year. And it was, it was very painful. We were very close. And my cousin, who's not saved, we don't know how to deal with the issue. So she goes to spiritualists and mediums and reads the tarot cards and believes she can talk to her son, believes he's telling her things, believes that um, he's directing her even though he's not here. It's this, it's this lack of assurance that we have that one day we're going to see them again. When we don't have this assurance in who Christ is and what he's done for us and the power of the resurrection, we then turn to other sources for comfort. And those other sources can be anything, whether it's your wealth, whether it's your, um, uh, you know, your partner, your husband, your wife, whether it's your job, it can be anything, but you got to have that assurance in who Christ is and the fact that he's going to resurrect you. And that time, that, that day is coming. Amen. Thank you so much, Mel. Vanu? I just agree with everything that was said. Um, we have young people, raising young people, so we have to be careful what kind of message we're sending to them, saying that success is wrong. Because I pray. Okay. Our prayer is the new generation, let's say LaSalle, new generation, they have enough money to fix this church, right? So they're not going to do that if they don't go to college or whatever. You understand? So we pray for them to be successful. But me personally, I like this verse in Proverbs, Proverbs 30, verse 7 to 9. It said, God, I pray, I don't, give me enough. I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be rich. So being poor, you, you will disown God. Oh, where's God? People will say, oh, look at you. You're praying and then look at you. And then being rich. You're so rich, you don't want to come to church anymore. People in church, oh, I don't want to sit by these people. They don't, you understand? Are you too busy? Saturday come or whoever Sunday come, you're like, oh, I'm too tired. I don't want to go to church. So that's my prayer personally. I like this verse. I, I don't want the both extreme. I just want to be comfortable so I can help. Amen. Uh, you want to say, you want to say something? And I'll try to be quick this time. Okay. Um, so when we talk about uh, um, riches, it all comes back to just one thing, management. If you remember when God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, that was a rich place. It even had all the minerals that you can think of in the world. It came back to just one thing, management. How you manage your money Okay, how you manage your resources. I'm happy Pastor is coming here. Pastor, what does the Bible say about money? About money, the mm -hmm. root of all evil. Is the root of all evil. Yeah. Okay. The law, the law. Okay. Love. I will the correct love. Pastor. The of, no. Pastor, the Bible says money is the answer to all things. <laughs> where? <laughs> okay. Did you say where? Okay, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter. It, 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 is, it is needed. Yes. And, and money is very important. E Ecclesiastes chapter, for the young people, as uh, Vanu said, young people understand. Money, as the Bible says, is the answer to all things. It boils down to one thing, management. Please uh, check Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. You, have, you can read it for me if, if you have it, okay? it will tell you straight, it, that's the words of a wise man. Mm -hmm. So whatever resources you have, no matter how little it is, it will boil down to one thing, management and God is going to make you accountable for everything. Whether he has given you $10, whether he has given you a million dollars, 
management is what is going to make you accountable for. Thank yes. you. Yes. It, 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 Amen. It, 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 as I said, the quotation that um, the reading last night um, that, that, that I told you about that we use in worship, it says it is God's plan that riches should be used properly, distributed to bless the needy and to advance the work of the Lord. If men love their riches better than they love their fellow men, better than they love God or the truth of his word, if their hearts are on their riches, then they cannot inherit eternal life. That is what the servant of the Lord says. But, 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 but I didn't stand here to talk about riches and managing money because money is important. It's how we manage it, of course, and use it to the advancement of the work of the Lord and taking care of the, of the poor. I stand there to, 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 to say that in Jesus' time, there were many concepts about the dead and about the resurrection. And if you notice, there was even a, a Sadducee who came to Jesus and tested Jesus and said to Jesus, then if a man, if a woman should marry Seven times when she gets to heaven, if you truly believe in the resurrection, whose husband will it be the per whose wife would she be? Would it be the first husband, second, third, or fourth? And Jesus said, In, 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 in heaven, we'll be like angels, we will not marry or given in marriage. But uh, the, the, the lesson this week is set in the Old Testament concept that from early in biblical history there is indeed the hope of the resurrection you, you know so the resurrection is not only set in the new testament where jesus died and was resurrected and give hope to the christian that there is a resurrection as early as biblical history rooted in old testament scriptures we can find the resurrection of the dead. Those who die in Christ will be resurrected and will live forever. You, you know, so the Old Testament is cementing that, mm -hmm. taking out also the, 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 the concept of in, reincarnation, mm -hmm. where persons don't believe in the resurrection, but believe that how you live your life here on earth. Now, when you die, if you were a good person, then you will be elevated in the new life when you are reincarnated. And if you live bad, then you might become a dog or an ant or, 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 or some lower form of animal. You know, the hope is in the resurrection. And Paul described this also with his um, opponents in, in, in the book of Corinthians, where in 1 Corinthians, um, 15, Paul give that assurance also of the resurrection. Christ was resurrected. Give hope to all the faith of the Old Testament prophets who look forward for that resurrection. Job will look forward for that day because Christ was resurrected. The hope of the Old Testament resurrection theology comes to light that they too will be resurrected and those of us who die will be resurrected Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Go ahead, Brother Eva. All right. Sometimes I think we stretch the lesson you know, because we lose the, the title of the subject, Hope of Resurrection. Every human being who has lived on this earth will be resurrected. That's the next point. Mm -hmm. Whether you are Christian or not, you will be resurrected. But the hope, he's talking about the hope of those who will resurrect because they had their trust in God. There's nothing wrong with being rich. I wish I had a judge like Trump, had my name on Daniel Yaboa. So when I'm coming to church this morning, maybe a helicopter drops me here and there will be nothing wrong. No, I'm serious. But listening to what you see, that's what sometimes the lesson stretches. Listening to what the psalmist said in Psalm 49, 49, verse 6. He says, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. 
That's the difference. You see, so they don't have hope. Their, their hope is the boasting of their riches and their present life. It doesn't mean that I should be hope poor. I don't want to come to here. I want to come here to church with uh, uh, what the designer suits. Hmm? But is that the, what will give me salvation? Is it my joy in coming to church in the showing off of my designer suit? You see, then I have no hope. And he said, that is why he says that he's comparing and he said that those who do not have the hope of eternal life boast. So the resurrection doesn't mean that only righteous people will be resurrected. But the difference between the resurrection is what must become important to us. Thank you. Go ahead, Pastor. Not contradicting, but remember I asked a question last week when I did the lesson review with Elder Chris, that for persons who don't know about the Savior, if they will be saved or they will be resurrected or they will come into judge, you know, and we got many answers. But I asked the question based on a statement that is made in the spirit of prophecy, right? That is why I asked the question based on a statement made in the spirit of prophecy. Because the statement that is made in the spirit of prophecy by Ellen G. White says, suggests that not every human being will be resurrected. Are you hearing me? Not every human being who lived on this earth will be resurrected. You know, and I, 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 I went in search of the statement and I, I found it. Let, let me read this statement to you um, from the servant of the Lord. Let me, let me read this statement for you. Just say, I saw why I asked that question last week because I knew that it was written. So I went in search of it. She said, I saw the slave master will have to answer for the soul of the slave whom he has kept in ignorance. And the sins of the slave will be visited upon the master. God cannot take to heaven the slave who has been kept in ignorance and degradation, knowing nothing of God or the Bible, fearing nothing but his master's lashes and holding a lower position that, than, the, than the brutes. But he does the best thing for him that a compassionate God can do. He permits him to be as if he had not been born. So, so, so what the servant of the Lord is saying, that for all the slaves who died in ignorance, not knowing anything about the Bible or anything about salvation or Christ, a compassionate God will not bring them back into resurrection. But the slave master will receive the punishment for the slave. And of course, the Lord is going to treat the slave as if they were never born. As a compassion. I, 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 and that was why I asked the question last week. Because I knew that it was written. So I, 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 I was thinking that if the slave will be as if they were never born. Because they don't deserve hell. Nor do they deserve heaven. What about those who live in some remote places across the world who have never heard salvation or about Jesus in whatever form? How would God treat that? I believe that the compassionate God, just as we treat it, he will treat the slave according to the servant of the Lord, will treat those also as if they were never. Thank you, Pastor. We understand that God is compassionate. But what I don't understand is about why isn't it everyone will be raised? I know that it says that the dead in Christ shall raise first and those who don't shall raise after, but it's all. So I don't understand. I'm a bit confused here now. Sorry, Someone please okay, explain ahead, to me because I don't understand. Yes, but even if I don't know Christ, I live terrible or I know Christ and I live bad or I did not know him and I live good, I still, he still will raise everyone. That's what I understand. He, he, he. But I don't understand now 
that only I don't understand. Please, Lord, Holy Spirit, help us today. Pastor, mm -hmm. hi. Um, so, you know, you've, you've, you've stirred quite a commotion over here. And so um, we heard you, right? Um, however, we're asking for some biblical support for what you have just stated, because it is our understanding, collective understanding that uh, that we all have to, we all have to see the face of Jesus. We're all going to be resurrected. I believe I read that this week in the lesson, right? And so there are going to be two resurrections, right? And every person has to give an account. It said every, it didn't say some, yeah. right? That every person has to give an account for his or her action. So I would really like to uh, have some biblical support for that statement. Pastor? I answered that by saying there's no biblical text. That is the, 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 the message that comes. It is just like for an infant that has died, mm -hmm. right? Where is the biblical support for the infant going to heaven or hell? Yeah, but. Hold on. <laughs> Go ahead, sightings. Go yes. ahead, sightings. Go ahead. The biblical support. Okay, uh, uh, Pastor. Um, yes. So when you when you were reading uh, what Ellen White spoke about, what she saw. Yes. Okay. The revelation. And then if you listen carefully to how she's writing it, mm -hmm. and then she gives her own interpretation. Her own impressions. Yes. Because at the end it says, I did see that the sins of the slaves are going to be unto the master. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then she says, God cannot take, you understand? Now, she is now making her own assessment. God cannot take a seven. Now, do you understand something? Yeah, that is a revelation. And I stand on it 100%. Okay. okay. That, that is going to happen. Okay. That will not be all. No. Okay, so let's yes. understand this one thing. Um, when it comes to the law of God, God says in Jeremiah 31 verse 33, yes. I will write a new covenant into, the, into men's hearts. Mm -hmm. So it does not matter where you are born. You will always know the law of the Lord. You can go to any part, of the remotest part of the world. Yes. You will discover something people still keep the Ten Commandments. Now, they will all know we should respect their parents. Mm -hmm. They know stealing is bad. They know killing is bad. Way before even the Bible Yeah, came. but that does not save you. That okay. does not save you, you know. Okay. A good, listen, a good neighbor know that stealing is bad and doesn't steal. No, How that, do they know? Okay, bad, number one. Doesn't, okay. will not go to heaven okay. if he does not yes, accept pass. Jesus okay. Christ. Pass. As well okay, person. How, yes. does that, how does that person, a good neighbor, how do they know that this is bad? Oh, it doesn't matter how. But no, I, it does. God wrote the law in your... Listen, listen. listen. We are it going to matter. be... No. E even though... Uh, Pastor, uh, uh, we are going to be judged according to the light that we have been given. It's like this. The God light has about given Jesus. You. Sorry. Salvation in Christ. Pastor. We are missing the mark because I can live good. I can live a good life. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't that morally. And if I don't accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, I cannot be saved. So, so I must hear about Jesus. So when did Noah must? So when did Noah accept, accept Jesus? Huh? When did Noah accept Jesus? When Noah accepted Jesus. When did he accept him? When Noah accepted Jesus. Yeah. When Noah accepted Jesus. When there is no point in time. That, that, no, that, no. That, 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 say, that you say, say Noah died before Jesus was born. So, Pastor, <laughs> listen, understand listen, there is thing. no point in time, Elder. Sorry? There is no point in time where no. you see a conversion for Noah right. to say that Noah um, was baptized as on the day of Pentecost that you have a point in time. But of course, Noah yeah. accepted okay. Jesus through the sacrifices that Noah offered pointing to Jesus, that Jesus would have come and died. From, from the ceremonial law was established, as it were, 
after Adam and Eve were driven from the Garden of Eden. That, 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 that all the patriarchs of old, all the sacrifices were sacrifices of hope in Christ, that Christ would have come. That is accepting Jesus. But, but, but we can take this up at a Bible class because this is yes, yes, yes. Sabbath. <laughs> okay. no, but no, I stand on the right talk about it. it's part yes. of just, just one last thing. Just one last thing, Pastor. Mm -hmm. No, it's because Pastor is a theologian, so I'm yet comfortable with him. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, this oh, the good. Bible says this is the condemnation of the world. Yes. The condemnation is that it's not that the world is in, in darkness, but the condemnation is that light came into the world, but men loved darkness more than light. Yeah, but you have to bring light to them. That is it. exactly I, exactly. Yes. So that's my point. That so. God will always write the moral law in your heart and everyone's heart. Like, I do believe my ancestors never saw Jesus. They came, the, some people died way before Jesus came. But I believe those that lived according to the light that was given to them, they, I will meet them in heaven without a doubt. Okay? And I believe that to once they accept and understand what salvation is in Christ Jesus. So that 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 is about them now. So go, go 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 ahead, Warren, because I have questions now. I, I have so many questions. Wow. Go ahead. Um. Um. Sister Joanne's question wasn't actually answered. I'm just saying. I'm just I'm just saying the question wasn't answered. Hold on. Let me let me let me finish. <laughs> Let me, I, I, I was about to say, I am unable to answer that question. And I will state that unequivocally, okay? Because my understanding of the statement you previously made is not in its entirety. So until I have further understanding on that, I cannot speak to the fact because that would just be hypothesis. Now, going back to the, point before this started, Brother Yeboah brought up the most pertinent point as far as it pertains to um, riches and, 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 and where your focus is. And what I, I just wanted to give a small point and, a, and, a, and a, 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 I guess a warning or a caution on that. Idolatry, you see idolatry continually through the Bible. And if we understand idolatry and what it is, we understand that anything can be made an idol. Now, where we as believers and acceptors of the word have to be very, 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 very cautious. And I'm saying it very because what, okay, I'll explain it this way. When you start walking with God and you start believing in God, God, he'll bless you, right? He'll bless you and he'll do things for you. He'll take you out of situations. He'll take you out of, out of opportunities. He'll, he'll put you in opportunities. He'll Enlarge your territory in some in, in most cases. Now, the thing that happens with, I'm speaking on believers now, when you get too comfortable with the blessings, there's times where you're looking forward to the blessings as opposed to focusing on he who's giving the blessing. Understand what I'm saying? And we have to be very careful as believers that we're not so focused with the blessing because then the blessing, even though it's from God, becomes the idol. You hear what I'm saying? And, and, and we have to be very, like, it's, it's that, that, that love of money text and, and as Brother Yeboah spoke on, on, on the the misuse, let's say, of riches, um, we have to be very careful that we don't take the promises of God 
and idealize that above God himself. We don't take the blessings of God and idealize that above. So it's just look at the examples in the Bible when we look at the children. There's so much different situations where Christ hates, and I could say that word, hates idols. Because anything that is an idol is anything that goes before him. And we have to be very careful. So I just wanted to give that, 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 that adjacent statement to what Brother Yaboa says as caution in that we're understanding that don't get too comfortable with the things that he gives because it can switch our focus where we're expecting those things and focusing on those things and forgetting who it is that is the giver of all things. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, I need help. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, please educate me. Okay. Um, based on the conversation we were having earlier with the pastor, when somebody dies, somebody who did not receive the word of God, somebody who lived under a rock, right? And that person did not, you know, get baptized or, you know, voiced out there, you know, I accept God as my savior, blah, blah, blah. And that person dies. Are you telling me that God is going to erase that person from the earth? Is that, is that the belief? Is that what's happening? No? We don't believe that? Please come to the mic. Let's let's talk about this. I'm I'm generally wanna hear from that. Right. I I believe in what I see in the Bible. Yes. Tell the me. The Bible Revelations one mm -hmm. and verse seven mm -hmm. tells us. Behold, mm -hmm. he is coming with the clouds, and every eye if you have eyes if you bought, we were born with eyes said every <laughs> eye will see him mm -hmm. even those who pierce him mm -hmm. and all tribes the tribe i have in ghana who don't know him the tribe in the village who have no water who dig and get a little bit of what it said all the tribes certain people are the tribes mm -hmm. people form tribes mm -hmm. okay and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him mm -hmm. even so amen. amen that's what the bible says and that's what i believe <laughs> thank you sister Ibo. go ahead Ace. go ahead Um, I want to say something about mm -hmm. the resurrection that we had spoke about. Mm -hmm. um, if you have your Bible, or you can read it later, John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. Mm -hmm. And I read it. It says, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice, Jesus' voice, and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Unjust and just will rise again. They will hear his voice. And then you will get what you have done as justice for everybody. So everybody will rise again. Um, Amen. Thank you. Go ahead. Pastor. Time is running out. So yeah. I want to make it as short as possible to answer your question specifically. I think you were answering the death, the difference yeah, between yeah. those. That, exactly. That's what I am. Uh, I want to tell us ourselves that if we believe that some people cannot be saved, then there's no point that the reason why we should waste our time 
interceding for them. Uh, by grace you are saved. And also, when you look at the, 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 uh, the friends who carry the paralyzed person to the feet of Jesus, he said when he looked to their faith, he told the, the paralyzed man, your sins have been forgiven you. And so we have been praying, I've been praying for my children. And I pray with the hope that I'll see them in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, sometimes, you see, the ministers, I must uh, confess, that ministers get carried away sometimes. And then they come in to get people to baptize rationally, say that, oh, there's a man who came in and appeal was made and he didn't uh, get up. And when he was going home, he was killed by a car and that man has lost his life. How, how could you tell? There is the Holy Spirit that convinces man to change. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the person came in and heard it and is meditating on it. He didn't rise up the same day to give his heart up. But along the run, he was recounting his sins, confessing and seeking how best he can serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. So nobody can predict whether this man I see will certainly go to hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't think that our righteousness by showing up in church is what is going to send us into heaven. Mm -hmm. So let us keep in mind that the reason why we are praying for our relatives and friends is that one day we will see them in the kingdom of heaven. But Amen. it's God that will determine that. Mm -hmm. You have one Wait, he, he, he asked before. You have one minute. <laughs> yeah, you have one minute. It's one okay. minute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Less. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. We have to close. 30 seconds. Okay. Jesus plant a garden. And um, after a while, there were wheat, uh, uh, tear, tears, right? You know, all over the garden, and you said to the disciples saw it and said, Well, um, what are we gonna are we gonna root up the um and the, the tears? And, and Jesus said, No, 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 let them remain there until the day of harvest. He is gonna do the reaping. You understand? I believe the prerogative of um who is going to be saved and who is going to be lost belong to God and God only. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, time, it's time. Um, I really, really enjoyed this discussion. Thank you guys for participating. Um, we believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Um, the hope, what we learned today is the hope that God gave us the hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ have been there the whole time, since the beginning of time. And at the end of the day, it's our hope, our faith in the resurrection, in Jesus' sacrifice that is still um, saving us today. If you don't mind standing up, I'm going to ask Elder Warren to close it. In <laughs> I want to thank uh, Sister Cassandra for this interactive lesson discussion. Amen. Amen, saints. Let us continue to study together so we can all increase our knowledge. Amen. And draw closer to our creator. Let us pray at this time as we transition into the next program. Our kind and loving Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us the breath of life. Those joining us via our online sources and as well as in the building, dear Lord, continue to bless and keep us. And as we transition into the next program, dear Lord, allow that what was discussed will, will permeate in our minds, dear Lord, and, and, and give us that urge to search your scriptures for more understanding and meaning of you, dear Lord. Bind us closer together as a church, dear Lord, and move us forward in the right direction. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, church. The Lord has been good to us. Today we are glad to be in his presence and to worship him in spirit and in truth. I take this opportunity to extend a, a special welcome to all our special guests, those who have joined us on our YouTube platform this morning, those who have joined us on our Zoom platform, and those of our special guests who are in person this morning, welcome. Welcome to all our family members, brothers and sisters who have joined us on our YouTube platform, on our Zoom platform and in person. It is good to see you. And we are together again, just praising the Lord. Because there is no place like this place, as you know, anywhere near this place in Montreal. Because on a Sabbath morning, this is the place to be. 7780 Boulevard Champlain to worship as people of God. I extend a, a special welcome this morning to our guest speaker, my colleague, brother, and friend, Pastor Abner Theodore, and his wife, Sister Theodore, and the three children. And of course, he has brought along with him Senior Theodore, and that is Daddy Theodore man who is the patriarch of the family pastor, Theodore, presently serving at the Bethel Church as a senior pastor there. And he and his wife, they are serving the Quebec Conference as family life directors. Amen? So we have the family life directors this morning, both husband and wife, in-house today and of course young Shania will do the song of meditation. Is it the song or we are getting more than one sister Tammy? How many songs we are getting from young Theodore? Two? One. <laughs> she said just. <laughs> all right. All right. Then if she has two, we will get two today. We're happy to have them. We pray that the Lord will use him mightily today to bring a message of hope and consolation to our hearts. We continue to say happy birthday to those who have celebrated a birthday during the course of this week or for the coming week. We continue to say happy anniversary for those of our family members who would have celebrated an anniversary during the course of this week or for the coming week. We continue to pray for our sick and our shut-in members. We continue to pray for the tailors. We continue to pray for Brother Conroy Laguerre. We continue to pray for Sister Shirley Roberts. I saw Brother Conroy Legier during the course of this week. Sister Brother Legier, he looks good. I, 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 I am just waiting on him to start the physio, to get up out of bed and start pumping some irons and some weights. But his face looks good. I continue, we continue to pray for Sister Daphne Aline, Pastor Betty. We continue to pray for the Jennings. We continue to pray for brother and sister Benjamin, even though sister Benjamin is coming out on a regular basis now. Good to see you, sister Benjamin. Continue to pray for sister Folks, sister Lillian, sister Mary Juni. We continue to pray for sister Tamanda, sister Mavis, elder Knight and brother Knight. And we continue to pray for brother Sam Duran. Well, the Sam looks good, Sister Julie. We saw him during the course of this week. He's in the hospital. Stop by, give him a visit. He's looking much better than the last time you saw him. And we are happy for the improvement. On the part of bereavement, Sister Grace Davison's mother died 
And she told me that the mother was a member of the La Salle New Life Church, even though many people they are trying to recall the face. And uh, of course, I guess some, some of you, you know the, the name. And the, the Thanksgiving service will be on Friday, the 28th of September, October. Uh, October. Thank you, Sister Tammy. Mm -hmm. So Tammy shot this morning. The 28th of October at Reader Gardens Chapel. The viewing will be on Thursday, the 27th from 7 p.m. until 9. And the Thanksgiving service will be the following day in the afternoon, starting at 12.30. Friday, the 28th of October at the Reader Gardens Chapel. And that is on Boulevard, the sources. And so for those of us who know the family members, you can, we are soliciting your support. All right, board members, board members in the house, uh, immediately after the divine board service, I would like two minutes with you. All board members, immediately after the divine board service. Also, I call on brother Byron Sinclair. Where is he? All right, he stepped up for a second. That would be come to services. He will make the pitch. Um, community services up and running and alive. Also, for upcoming week of prayer, the annual week of prayer, annual week of prayer that is done by the world church worldwide. Every Seventh day Adventist church participate in an annual week of prayer at this time of the year and the time will be november the 5th through to november the 12th and we will be going for the entire week starting on the 5th november the 5th and we will be on zoom on the 6th the 7th the 8th the 9th the 10th the 11th and then we are back in person on the 12th to conclude the week of pearl we are using our pearl line zoom number we are using the Pearl Line Zoom number for our week of Pearl, and that is 958-556-528-71-189-133. See it on the screen? Take note, that is of upcoming week of Pearl. I now turn over to Brother Byron, not here yet? Well, Sister Oliveris. It is your time. Our church clerk will present a name as we continue to do our reading. Happy Sabbath, church. I'm here to do the first reading for incoming transfer. Amen. We are getting a new member. Paula Greaves, transferring from Thailand, SDA Church, Barbados, West Indies, to La Salle New Life, SDA Church, Montreal, Quebec. Thank you. This is the first reading. We'll have our second reading. And if you do not know Paula Greaves, Paula Greaves has been here for a, a long time. And she has now made La Salle her home church. Sister Paula, would you stand so that the Virgin who membership coming from Barbados we will be happy to extend the right hand of fellowship to you at the appropriate time. Where's Brother Byron? Still missing? Let us continue. May the Lord bless us richly today as we wait upon him to speak to our heart through a message of his life. Happy Sabbath Church. Can we all stand as we open up with total praise? As we lift up the name of Jesus in this place, amen.
Thank you, Lord, for your presence among us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we already received from you. And thank you for the ones coming as we are about to start the last part of our worship this morning. We pray that you will remain with us. May you touch all of us and help us, Lord, to enjoy that time with you. And at the end of the service, may all of us receive a, a praise or a song or something that we will testify that we have touched with your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath Church. Give thanks to the Lord. Call for him to help you. Tell all the nation what he has done. Tell them how great he is. Sing to the Lord because of his great things he has done. Let the whole world hear the good news. Let everyone who lives in Zion shout and say, Israel's holy God is great, and he lives among the people. The choice Amen. is called to worship. Amen. Come on, Churchill, come, let us adore him. Oh, 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 sing our opening hymn, hymn number 373, Seeking the Loss. Seeking the lost, yes, kind. 
time where we get to sing and give God praise some more, right? With our beautiful so voices that God has given Amen. you, right? This is our heavenly choir. We are going to be in that heavenly choir, I hope. Amen. Amen. And this is why we got to give God praise. We practice it down here. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Now, now, who knows a little bit about heaven? Hello? Test, test. Oh, it's way too loud. So who knows a little bit by, about heaven by a show of hands? Who knows a little bit about heaven? Okay, now for, for those of you who don't know about heaven, there's a thing that happens in heaven. And I get excited because when I think about heaven, it gets me excited, right? Yes. I, and there's a thing that happens in heaven. There's these, there's these two types of angels, and one's called the seraphims, and the other one's called the cherubims. Okay, now what's really crazy about these angels is that the seraphims, they have how many wings? They have six wings. Okay, now there's two wings that are covering their eyes, right? And then there's two wings that are covering their feet. And then they use the other two wings to fly. But what the Bible says, it says in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 6 and verses 2 and 3, it says that while they're doing this, they're crying 
holy, holy, holy. They're covering their eyes because they're beholding the glory of the Lord. Amen? When, when we go to heaven, and the thing is, what's, what's, what's even a, a sidebar is that it never stops. Amen. It never stops. They say, holy, 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 holy. They keep on crying, holy, because our God is holy. The song that we're going to sing, we sang it one time, and, 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 and it's an easy song for you guys to learn. It's called, Holy is Our God. This is just a declaration of God's holiness. This is just a declaration of what God has done in our lives. I woke up this morning, I couldn't even speak. I didn't even have a voice this morning, but I still gonna give praise to God. Amen. Amen. Come join with us and sing, Holy. Hopefully the projector doesn't go off and on, but the words are gonna be on the TV and on the projector, and you could just follow after us. It's, Holy is our God. It starts off. Heavenly Father, so faithful and true, we bring an offering and worship you. We fall to our knees and cry, holy. You're righteous and pure, blameless and free. Because your blood washes us clean, we join with the angels and cry, Holy, Lord, you are holy. Holy, holy is our God, holy. Lord of all, Lord of the great I am, he's Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end, Savior and King, Lamb slain for our sin. We're going to repeat that again. Say Lord of all, the great I am, Alpha Omega, the beginning, Savior and King. Lamb slain for our sin. Then it goes to the chorus. Holy is our God. Holy is our God. Holy is our God. We declare you are. Now the second verse. Provider and healer. Protector and friend. Almighty God, Almighty forever God. we will sing. We will Say, sing. You, are you are the greatest. No one compares. No one compares to We're going to do it again. You. Say, provider and healer. And healer. Yeah. And Say, Almighty God. Almighty God. Say, you are, you are the greatest. No one, one compares. Say, nothing compares. Nothing compares to you. Say, holy is our God. 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 Holy. 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 We're singing again. Holy is. Holy is our God. this part. Listen. It says, Lord, you are holy. Lord, you are holy. Lord, you are holy. Sing it Lord, Lord, you are holy. Say, 
say, Lord, say, Lord, Lord, you are holy. Join with the angels and say, you are. You are say, holy. Lord, you are holy. Sing it again. Everybody say, Lord, say, Lord, Lord, you are. Say, Lord, you are. Say, Lord. One more time. Holy is our God. Holy is our God. Holy is our God. Holy is our God. Holy, holy, holy our God. Holy is our God. Holy. the angels and sing holy, holy. just keep on singing holy 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 one more time holy song simply says let praises rise from the inside from the inside of me can i get a little just a little more volume tidings tidings on this one just a little please everybody knows this let's pray let praises rise from the inside come on church from the inside of me may you delight on the inside on the inside on the inside of me come feel come feel my life from the inside from the inside from the inside of me. Set me on fire, set me on fire from the inside, from the inside. Can we all sing all I want? Because all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. All I want is for you. Take it back to the beginning. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight on the inside, on the inside, on the inside of me. Come fill my come fill my Set me on fire, set me on fire from the inside, from the inside of me, cause all I want, cause all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted up, all I want. Oh, 
want God to fill your heart and your life every day, every moment. Amen. It says, fill my life till all they see. your prayer this morning that you want to be glorified that you want God to lift and fill you up amen you may be seated
the deacons and deaconesses please come forward. It is time to worship God with our tithes and offerings. It is an expression of the heart that we trust God with our finances, even when the numbers don't make sense. We give the first fruit, the best of the top that we have set aside to give. It doesn't matter the financial flow. It doesn't matter because I know God provides for my needs as he has proven faithful time and time again. Matthew 6, 25 and 26 says, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Let us pray. Loving father, we thank you so much for being our provider. We thank you that you have blessed us with jobs. And even when we have no job, you have a way of providing for us. So we came this morning to return to you of our first fruits and pray that you would bless it so that it will bless others. There is so much to do, Lord, and we thank you that you have chosen us, that you are using us to do our part in your field. So, Father, we lift up the offerings to you and pray that you would bless it. Lord, multiply our blessings as we give so we can tell others what you have done for us, even when we seem to have had nothing and you made it into something. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. The deacons and deaconesses will wait upon you for your tithes and offerings.
Happy Sabbath, church. Um, please stand for the scripture reading. The scripture reading is taken from Psalms 127, verse 1. It reads, I accept the Lord. Oh, sorry. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. This is the reading of God's holy word. It's time to seek the Lord in prayer. Jehovah is your name. Great I am is your name. Victory is your name. Deliverer is your name. Oh God, you've sent your Holy Spirit <coughs> to lead us to this place to worship you. We know your Holy Spirit is here. So what we are asking for is a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. Oh God, I pray that you will search me. See if there be anything in me that is not of you. Take it away from me, Lord, and let this prayer be heard. Oh God, you have placed us at this corner for a beacon of light. And I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will continue to be with us and to guide us in what we do. We know our church, it is, it is, a, it is a mixed culture. We know, God, that you have place us here each and every one of us for our work and may you help us that we will do the work that you have permitted us to do 
Dear God, I pray for our families, the family that is supposed to be the one to hasten your soon coming. The families that are supposed to lift you up in prayer, to lift you up in praise. The enemy has found his way in most of our homes and has causing havoc. God, we are prayer used to be heard. It's not heard anymore. Entertainment is taking place. We are songs used to be sing. Lord, it's not sung anymore. May you have mercy upon us. Lord, this weekend, I had the experience of seeing a mother who is going around with a picture of her daughter and, and asking for prayer for her daughter. Lord, this is a universal cry for our children that you have given to us. And I know, God, you're coming back and we're going to have to present them to you. At this time, I pray in the name of Jesus and through the influence of your Holy Spirit that wherever our children are gone, where they are wandering, I'm asking, Lord, that you will, you will draw them back with your cards of love. We know some of them are in a spot now where the enemy has have a headlock on them. They want to move. They want to release themselves, God, but they can't do it. So I'm praying that you will reach out. You will reach out and touch them and help them to find their way home. Not a way home just to the church, God, but a home way to you. Because we know without a relationship with you, it is useless. So God, have your way with us. I pray, Lord, for or the teachers of this church, teachers that have taken it up on themselves by your commission to lead little ones to you. I pray that you will consecrate our teachers. That's whatever they're, lead, whatever they're teaching the little ones. It may be something that they can move on in life with and remember, thus said the Lord through those teachers. I thank you for young leaders that are taking the front, the going forward, Lord, to lift you up and to be strength for the church. They have no strength of their own. They have none, oh God, but I pray that your mighty hands will be upon them. May you cover them with your robe of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And each time, God, that they are tempted to do anything that is not of, like, that is not like of you, May you touch them and may you draw them with your cards of love. Oh God, I pray that you will just fill us. You will fill us with your sweet anointing. Bless us. Your people have come and have come kneeling before you at the altar. I pray, God, that whatever it is on their hearts, that you will not allow them to get up and leave with it because they know you are awesome God they know you are a merciful God they know you are a just God and they've come to empty themselves to you I pray God that you will hear their humble cry you will see the tears that only you can wipe God have mercy upon your people as the apostle Paul would say that the things that he wants to do he finds not himself doing it and the very thing he doesn't want to to do he find himself do it may you have mercy upon us oh god as a church some of us are at the crossroad right now in our lives we do not know where to turn but holy spirit we're asking in your own sweet way that you will draw divinely close to us and help us to find our way we lift up the pastor before you, the one whom you have selected to break the bread of life to us, to lead your people. I know whom you call God, you have, you, 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 who you call, you have equipped. And I believe that you have equipped him with a message today. And may whatever he has to say come directly from you. May your heart be filled with joy and may our hearts be blessed. And may we go forth 
and to tell others of your soon coming and of what you have done for us. I pray, God, that you will forgive us of our tardiness, of our shortcomings, where, where we could have said a word for you, but our mouth, our lips are sealed. But God, open us up, open our mouth that we can give a praise to you and we can help someone by your grace to return to you. Thank you so much for this blessing. Thank you so much for the privilege of talking to you today. I pray in no other name than in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sabbath Church. Um, so this morning I'll be singing Change Me. Um, I know we all need God to touch our lives so that he could change us. So um, change me. I hope y'all are blessed. Change me, oh God. Make me more like you. Change me, oh God. Wash me through and through. Create. clean home so that I may worship you change me oh God make me more Wash me through and through, create in me 
always my privilege to worship with my brothers and sisters at La Salle New Life. I thank my brother, my mentor, my colleague for the invitation. And I pray that uh, the Lord will bless us, will bless me first. And from the blessing that I get from that, you will be blessed as well. It's always a privilege for me to have my um, daughter to sing before I preach. Um, you know, sometimes there's things that you wish you could have done, but the Lord answered through, you know, siblings, and I have my, my satisfaction. You know, it's something that I wanted to do, singing, but singing doesn't want me. Even if I chase, chase um, sing, uh, it doesn't want me, so I give up on it, right? They are all sing, but not me. But that, that's, that's all right, that's all right. Um, it is our privilege, my wife and myself, to serve you as the family life leaders. And, um, you know, it's when it comes to family, it's one of the heavy load that you need to um, deal with. But um, since you are praying for us and you are bringing your input, we are confident that with the Holy Spirit, we will be able to contribute um, positively in this ministry. Um, next month, we will have a, a meeting with all the leaders. So you will receive um, an email for the, the information. And we hope that you will be part of that meeting um, from La Salle New Life um, Family Life Department. This morning, for the few minutes that we will share together, um, I will be speaking about family. Anytime I have the opportunity, since I have my own church, so I just take the advantage to um, the opportunity to speak um, on family. And as you can see, the title is a sure foundation. Um, this is something that we all need to be um, very sensitive to. Uh, today in our society, family is going through some tough time and it's, that's why we have like so many young people in the streets. Usually it's because, not because the parents um, didn't want to take care of them, but sometimes life is so hard and they have to do many things at the same time. And unfortunately the children are the ones um, living with the, with the um, results. So we need to keep our children, our families in prayer and we know that the Lord will intervene and we will win that battle. Just before we start, I invite you to pray with me as we ask the Lord to come once again to uh, be with us. Our Lord and Savior, we thank you for all the songs, the prayers. Now, as we are about to share the words, may you visit us and help us Lord, to understand what we will present today. And may you help us Lord, to um, practice them in our lives so that we may um, experience the happiness that you wanted for us through marriage. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are all building something 
in life, don't we? We are all building our lives, our houses, career, our businesses. When everything is going well and life is great, a weak, shaky foundation won't reveal itself. We won't pay too much attention to the foundation. But how often is everything going great in life today? Is there something that is great in your life today? In the real world, stress, anxiety, problems, and struggles come at us almost daily, if not hourly. Those are the times when the winds are violent and the rain is beating down on our houses. Those are also the times when we will become clearly aware of how firm and sure our foundation is, or isn't it? If we, were, we look today, thousands of families are headed for destruction as the love of many grows cold. Relationships among people are crumbling. Even churches are falling apart and businesses are falling into panic. The whole world seems to be heading for self-destruction. Why are, are so many lives being ruined? Why is every nation on earth facing such tragic and dear circumstances? Why does it mean that the, Lord, the world is coming apart at the seams? The answer lays in the word of God and can easily be found by anyone who is willing to search for the truth with an open mind. That's the trouble with the world. They refuse to hear the truth and would rather believe the deception and lies of the devil. Isaiah 28 verse 16 says, so this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone on Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be striking with panic. So when we look for that sure foundation, there will be no panic in our families. The reason that so much needless tragedy is prevalent in our world is that most of us don't build our lives, our family, even our church, our community upon a sure foundation. You know, When you love someone, on what you see, the foundation is not too deep. I remember once I was working somewhere and I saw a house. They just lift up that house on the air and I was wondering what happened. But there was a problem with the foundation. And they called someone to fix that problem because there were some cracks on that foundation. And the company came, they worked hard to, to fix that cracks. But few months later, the cracks came back. 
And the, 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 the owner says that he was shocked and, 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 and mad because the company just took his money and he thought that the company didn't do a good job. So he decided to call another company so that that company would be like some specialized one and they would work as hard as possible. But a few months after the cracks came back. And now he called a third company. And when they came, they just look at the cracks and, and he, he said, well, I'm not touching it. And he asked, can't you do the job or is there anything wrong? He says, look, you see the cracks that you see, they are not the problem, but they are the symptoms of the problem. Why the symptoms? Because the soil where you have your house is a sandy soil. That, so even if I fix the cracks, when the house shakes, they're gonna just come back. So you need to go deeper than just the cracks. You need to, 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 to solidify the soil first. And after that, we will fix the cracks. Sometimes friends, in our lives, we have some cracks. Those cracks can be, you know, the things that you love and you cherish in your life that, for, that, that, that never allow you to go forward. You need to deal with that cr cracks first. And after that, you will see improvement in your life. You know, sometimes there's some, some addiction that you have in your life. There are the cracks that, 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 that forbid you to be, you know, to succeed in what you are doing. You need to deal with them first. And after that, you will experience happiness. You see, that's why young people, ladies and gentlemen, you need to be careful when you are choosing whom you're going to spend the rest of your life with. You see, when you love someone for money, it's not love, it's profits, personal insurance. When you love someone for their intelligence, it's not love, it's admiration. When you love someone for their beauty, it's not love, it's attraction. But when you love someone and you don't really know why, it is this intrinsic relationship that unites you with that person. This is the real love. You know, sometimes... My wife and I, we just, you know, talking and we would, like, she would ask me, why, why do you love me, honey? I don't know, but I just love you. But this almost 20 years, I just love her. Why? I don't know, because I love her. So you need to find something that deeper than just appearance. Because if it is appearance, just imagine when something happened in the life of that person that you love. Are you going to keep loving that person? The foundation needs to be deeper than just what you see, what you smell. But it it's needs to be something that is spiritual. Something that you cannot express, but you feel it, you live it. This is the show of foundation. And you can only get that foundation when you have a personal relationship with God yourself. You see, that's why when I have the privilege to, 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 to prepare a couple for, wed for, 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 for marriage, I, I, the first thing that I do with them, I just take that triangle and I put Christ in the top and both of them in the bottom. And I tell them the first thing that you need to do, you need to get your relationship straight with God. Because if you are waiting for someone to, to, to attract you to God, you will never be with him. But if you have already that relationship, when things are not going good with your spouse, and I'm not saying if, I say when, because surely there will be trouble time in your relationship. And if God is not the basis, the foundation of that relationship, 
that will fail. And that's why we have so many couples, so many families that are falling apart. It's because they don't have a personal life, a per personal relationship with Jesus. When things are getting bad, they prefer to give up on that person. But when you have a personal life with Jesus, you know, in fact, when there is a problem in a couple, it's a spiritual problem. It's a spiritual problem because if you have a personal relationship with Jesus, you will learn to, to, to accept his forgiveness and you will learn to forgive others. So that means when things are not going well with my wife and I go to Christ and I ask for forgiveness and he forgive me, I, I, I must think about it. What about my wife? And in the same way that I receive that forgiveness, I will forgive my wife. And you know, when you forgive your wife, it's not because you are you or, or your husband, it's not because you are weaker, but it's because you are stronger. We have too many, you know, weak people in marriage today. They prefer to start over, even if they're going to have to start over to, to, to match everything that they have done in, in the previous relationship. They're going to have, they, they prefer to start a new relationship. And that's why they say when you get married the first time, the, the, the percentage of divorce is about 50% now. And the second time, it's 75%. And they stop serving for the third one because that one is almost non-existent. We need a sure foundation in our relationship. A solid um, soil and sure foundation is much needed today. That foundation must be solid, unshakable, perfect, and without flaw. That foundation must be tried, tested, and proven sure. That foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ and his death on the cross, brought on a board um, tomb, his resurrection from the dead by his own power. We need a solid foundation for our relationship. Foundation are everything. We need them for building. We need them in our families. The Bible says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Psalms 11, 3. The foundation in our culture are being threatened. Basic Christian, Christians' values are being tossed out the window. Sex before marriage is considered acceptable. Lying is celebrated. Marrying someone of the same gender doesn't matter. Brothers and sisters, if the foundations are destroyed what can the righteous do let's say like joshua like joshua in joshua 24 verse 15 if serving the lord seems undesirable to you then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served or the gods of the Ammonite, amorites in whose land you are living. Listen carefully to this. Joshua says, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Values, the basic values can be changed by the government, by our societies, but for us as Christians, as believers, we will serve the Lord, the creator. Brothers and sisters, 
There can be no other sure foundation upon which to build our lives than believe and trust in the unshakable foundation of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only foundation that will stand against every test, every storm, and every trial. But unfortunately, Jesus is pushed out of our society. He's out of many people's lives. He's out of many relationships. This is the reason why there is so many separations. This is the reason divorce is all over, unfortunately, even in the church. This is the reason that so many young people are in prison because we just push Jesus outside of our, our lives. Brothers and sisters, we really need a sure foundation in our lives, in our marriage, in our family. Without that foundation, things are not going to be better. Listen to this. Matthew 7, 24, 27 says, Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on, on the walk. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it has its foundation on the walk. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the storms rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. You see, when we buy a new car, we make sure that all the requirements are met. Nobody will put gasoline in his car if it's not the right fuel that he has to put in it. Because the person will follow all the details in the manual. But when it comes to family, when it comes to relationship, we think that we know better than the constructor and we want to do by ourselves what we desire, what we feel like. That's why we get in trouble with our lives. That's why the, 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 the families are filling apart. That's why we are, we are, we are losing our, our, our children. It's because we are not taking the manual to see what Jesus as for us to succeed in our lives. It is important for us to go back and don't be fool. Be the wise man. You know, foundation play, plays a vital role in any kind of success. Or maybe you've tried so many times, but nothing works. Maybe you've done your best, but still you cannot get along in that relationship. Listen today. I have something to, for you today. You need to check the foundation. You need to check the manual. Anything that is not on a sure foundation will certainly fall. It says in Psalms 127, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Without God, it's not worth it. When you leave the Lord out of your life, out of your family, out of your relationship, out of your career, all that you do is in vain because the foundation is not good. The word vain shows up three times in these songs. It means something that, that has no value or worth. 
It is an empty achievement. Even if you have a lot of money, but if God is not on the, in the foundation of that money, well, you're going to say it goes very fast. Solomon uses two strong images. The building of a house and the guiding of a city. There are images of security, trust. These images answers and essential needs of life. The wise man Solomon speaks to those who labor and turn without trusting God. You need to put your trust in God. And Jesus has to be in, in the equation. In fact, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the father and the mother. He has to be the influencer of the boyfriend and the girlfriend that you are choosing. Jesus has to be everywhere in everything that you are doing. There is no personal life without Jesus. Today, well, it used to be back then as well, when they reach a certain age, they say that, well, it's my life, not your life. It's not only today. It, 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 it was the same back then. You don't need to tell me what to do in my life. Yeah, but, you know, honey, I don't want you to make that. Well, you have done it. I want to do it so that I may know if it is good or bad. See, you don't need to experience it to know if it's bad. Just look around and you'll see. The results just speak for themselves. But if you want to do it, they warn you. We need to, if God is not in the equation, if God is not there, there is no personal life. There is no relationship without Jesus. There is no family, no church without Jesus. Unless the Lord builds it for you, you are labor in vain. I want you to notice once. One every important point concerning this power of Christ, whether you, your, 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 your foundation is based on Jesus or not, the rain, floods, and winds are surely coming. Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 45, he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Both Christians, believers, and non-believers will have trials in their lives. But when you have the good foundation, when you have Jesus as your counselor, surely you will win the battle. You see, maybe someone says, well, pastor, you... Mention, you know, when you're starting that relationship. But what about those who think that there is no possibility to make any change? Let me tell you. I saw another house. And th that time, the, there's a big problem with the foundation. Because what they used to build that foundation was not the right um, materials that they, they were supposed to use. And, and that house started to sink in the soil. So, so there is nothing that they were able to do. But there is a specialized company who came. And they, they say that they can change that thing. You know, maybe you are on the age of separation or divorce, but I want to tell you there is hope. 
There is hope when you know that you, you, you know that the Lord can do anything. There is nothing that is impossible for him. There is hope. If you are willing to do your part, there is hope for you. That house was sinking, but there's a company who came. They said that they can repair it like a car. They just leave that house. They break all the foundation and they rebuild it with new materials. That means your relationship is not something that, that for, 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 that, for, 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 for what there is no hope. If you believe, it will happen. But you need to believe in it. Get the help that needs to be getting for your relationship. Sometimes we stay quiet. We don't want to do what we're supposed to do. And we see our families just, you know, falling apart. But today I want to tell you that there's nothing that is impossible for God. I've seen people, you know, couples that were separated for years and after years they got back together and they're happy to be together if you want if you have the desire it can happen with the lord today i want to let you know young people some people think that I must find someone in my life. But today I'm gonna let you know that it's not a must. Don't force it yourself. Let God decide for your life. And if it's not God's will, you're gonna be happy. Some people say that it's better to make the experience even if it's gonna be harmful. My philosophy is different. It's better to be alone than having a stumbling block to, you know, pull behind you. Because the first marriage is the marriage. Maybe you, you didn't hear me. The first marriage is the marriage. You will never forget that moment. Even if you pretend to be happy with that person, you are not happy with him because you are distract with what you have lived before. Jesus is here to repair our foundation. His repair is not guaranteed for life for this life, but for the life eternally. There is no better guarantee than that. Jesus is in the foundation repair business. He repairs your life and brings all the broken and cracked places back together. Then he becomes your, he, he becomes your solid work um, foundation your sure foundation, and you never have to worry about the storms of life again. What have you based your life upon today? Is it upon the sure foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ? Why not put your trust in, in him? Why not place your life in his hands? Why not surrender your life to him so that he can place you, your feet upon the walk? All that you need and have, you must remember, come from God. The house that brings us protection is from God.
The city that gives us security and stability is from God. The food and daily provisions we need to sustain life is from God. The children who support and protect us in our old age, they are all come from the love of the Lord. We are totally depend on God and God alone. When we try to do things apart from God, we miss out God's blessings. Unless the Lord builds your family, the mother raising her children labors in vain. Unless the Lord bless and builds your business, the entrepreneur labors in vain. Unless the Lord builds your education, the student labors in vain. Unless the Lord builds the sermon, the pastor's labors in vain. Unless you, you put God front, back, and center in your relationship, it won't work. You can do whatever you want. If God is not in the midst of that relationship, there's no way it can work. It doesn't depend on you, your parent, your wives, your husbands, your whatever you can think. It never did, and it never will either, unless the Lord builds it. It will fall down miserably. You need to get the sure foundation for your life for your family, for your Christian lives, you need to get the sure foundation. May the Lord help us to get that sure foundation and be an example so that people can be attracted to him. God bless us. Let us all stand to sing our closing hymn. Hymn number 522. My hope is built. Nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name.
happy to know that if we stand on Christ, the solid rock, then our foundation will be a sure foundation. Because if we choose any other foundation than Christ, we know, Lord, that it is sinking sand. Thank you, Lord, for the word proclaimed today from your throne. Bless each heart that receive your word today. Thank you, Lord, for the preacher. Continue, Lord, to bless him and his family and continue to use him to proclaim the gospel truth so that souls will be born for your kingdom. As we face the untried week, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will go before us, lead us into the untried week, and if it pleases thee, that we should meet here next Sabbath to continue to lift up your name in worship. We pray, Lord, that your will will be done. But if not, may we meet in heaven where we will never part again. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy and exaltation. To the only wise God be glory, power, honor, and dominion, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Please be reminded, parents, Heart Finder will be this afternoon at 4 p.m., not 4.30, 4 p.m. Be on time. Join us on Wednesday on our fur line for our Wednesday evening fur meeting. And see you next Sabbath. I will have a word for you next Sabbath. A sermon entitled, Come See a Man. Looking forward to see you online on Wednesday evening. Join us as we take you out of here with our praise team. Who am I that you are my full of peace? That you hear me. Please be reminded to meet in the front please. How you love.